all right another forward looking item um we will get to china eventually <laughs> we have a lot to talk maybe about maybe in china on, don't maybe worry more went on than i thought the, over these last two weeks um so there are rumors that f1 teams are seeking to limit the number of teams allowed on the grid for the new concord agreement for 2026 to 2030 um i hate this so much Please share your thoughts and feels, Catherine. <laughs> I really, really dislike this. So going into the background, obviously Andretti has been trying to get a Formula One team onto the grid. Right. Um, they, he passed the um, the FIA's challenge, you know, list, list of challenges. Um, and then when they got to the FOM, Formula One Management, which is the teams and, and you know, Formula One is an organization, they said no for a number of reasons. One of them was um, some concerns about a lack of competitive competitive car um but the other one was there that wasn't really talked about was definite but was definitely an issue is the um the dilution of the prize money so there's a big pool of prize money available every year and the teams get a percentage of it based on their finishing in the driver's standing so if you have an 11th team that gets divided into 11 portions instead of 10 at the same time formula one is valued so highly right now that any in in my opinion any dilution of prized funds is going to be negligible based on the benefits of another team coming onto the grid and more drivers coming onto the grid and more international eyes on the sport yeah you recoup it with the the increased visibility literally immediately like there there's no um there's no question of it i think that this is a really greedy move um from from the teams that i think is is incredibly short-sighted one of the excuses that the teams um or that fom as an organization came out and said was that andretti would benefit more from the formula one brand than formula one would benefit from andretti and i'll link um if you're watching this on youtube to our full discussion about this but that is bullcrap um and they just need to get used to the fact that you can have more than 10 teams and still have a, you know, a profitable Formula One season. Yeah, I mean, playing devil's advocate here just for, you know, purposes. Um, maybe they have a lot of market research because they would have had to do market research in order to do this. So maybe it does show those I things. Think so. I'm not saying it does, but, you know. I'm saying that whatever market research they did do <laughs> was inaccurate. I and mean, you and I'm I have just trying just, to play I, I know, advocate here. I know you are. I know, I know we've you talked are. about this, but you know, maybe, maybe bringing an eleventh team does dilute the competitiveness, maybe, and maybe it does dilute the payment. Even though I know that they'd have to pay a ton in to kind of make up for that as well. Uh, we've talked about this. Andretti is an would be an American team, so like a true American team because Haas is kind of Italian with their Ferrari links, kind of American. Kind of um, just meh. Kind of just meh. And, you know, Andretti has a really good history in motorsport, and it would bring more eyes in the U.S. At, there's exactly to this coin. But... I mean, clearly this is, but I, I will say that Max Verstappen does more to damage the competitiveness of Formula One than so Andretti admit it. would. So of you admit I do. it. He's destroying the sport. No, he's not. Please We've had that discussion this. anyway. Please clip this so we have no. it forever and ever. No, Max absolutely Verstappen not. destroying Formula One, coming from absolutely a Red not. Bull fan. But it is the the there's a lack of competitive uh, of perceived competitiveness. Com- right. Words, Catherine, competitiveness, um, because of Max's dominance, and that's not going to change whether it's eleven teams or twelve teams or ten teams. Um, so, and and this wouldn't stop other teams from coming onto the grid, but you would have to buy one out. And I think that the most vulnerable ones for any type of buyout would be Haas and would be Alpine, especially yeah. in light of what's going on with both teams right now. No, I agree. I agree. I. <laughs> <laughs> Six one way, half dozen another, because, like, to us, it really doesn't matter. We're just fans, you know what I mean? So, like, if they add another team, great. If they don't, great. It's still a great sport. It's still super competitive. But I think it just shows, like, the greed of the owners. And that's yes. what, like, bothers me. But Yeah, agreed. Neither here nor there. 
We'll see. I still really want to see Andretti come to the grid. Like really I agree. Well. And and this um so this Concord agreement won't be signed until mid 2025 is what is what it looks like and andretti um the the update on andretti right now is andretti will be entering teams in f2 and f3 to kind of solidify their base of becoming a feeder team into formula one they've opened a new um factory facility um in the uk so they're you know even though the the answer was no not right now because they want a new concord agreement and they want the higher dilution fee um it is i I still feel that it's an inevitability and I don't think that they're going to, you know, actually cut it to 10, you know, make a limit of 10 teams, but those are the rumors and I think they're dumb. I mean, they could also just buy out Haas. Exactly. Which is definitely an option. In our lifetime, I think we will see Andretti come to the grid, come to the grid. And I also think we'll see Haas leave it. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. 